much brew about nothing. Playing some four color warriors in modern. And this looks keepable. Bloodstained Mire for our opponent. Cracks it. Blood Crypt. Untapped. And a Goblin Guide. This should be interesting. We get a Marsh Flats out of the deal. Another Paragon. All right. Cavern on Warrior, Nicotl. And pass the turn. Opponent attacks with Goblin Guide. We have a Mardu Strike Leader on top. I guess we take it? Down to 16. Mountain for our opponent. Don't really want to draw that Strike Leader here, but you can't really do anything about it. Opponent passes. Well, let's march flats, crack marsh flats. Oh, I don't know if we can afford to get an untapped shock land. It put us to 13. Sacred Foundry would max out our Nakatl. All right, I think we got to do it. And then we get in with Nakatl. Put our opponent to 14. And then just a bramble. Pass the turn. Searing blood, all right. We'll spend the two life to mutagenic growth. Down to 11. Opponent goes to attacks. Let's see what's on top of our deck. A marsh flats. I think we got a block. I don't like doing this, but I think we have to. Wooded Foothills for our opponent. Bump in the night down to eight. Lava spike to five. And opponent passes. Oh, that's collected company two. Well, I think our best bet is to... Play Chief of the Edge. Attack for four. Temple Garden tapped. And then theoretically, if our creatures live and we live, we win with dashed Mardu Strike Leader. I don't know how likely that is, but... Oh no, they have a bolt? Jeez, so our opponent has to be on literal blanks here for us to win. And another bump in the night. All right. Uh, close, and we got off to a bit of a slow start. So against Burn, I think we want Thalia's to slow our opponent down. Spellskite, Soren, go down. Eldrazi Displacer feels incredibly slow. A Mutagenic Growth is kind of painful. And a Mardu Strike Leader, and eh. Actually, let's go down the Dismembers as well for Disfigures. Go down Dismembers, up Disfigures, and just try it like that. All right, we're on the play, which is good. All right, this is fairly reasonable. Let's just Cavern on Warrior and lead on Bloodsoak Champion. Pass the turn. Wool Reaper is nice in this matchup if things actually die. Opponent Lava Spikes us, down to 17, passes, another Collected Company. Well, let's get in with Bloodsoak Champion. Play Woe Reaper. Play Overgrown Tomb, tap, pass the turn. Now we kind of just want to draw lands for these Collected Companies. Opponent passes. Well, there's a Stomping Grounds. Stomping Grounds, tapped. And Chief of the Edge? Wouldn't be surprised if we got Searing Blazed or Searing Blooded. Bled. Attack for six. See what happens. Yeah, here comes a Searing effect. This is actually interesting. 
Wool Reaper lets us start gaining life, so they might have to kill that. But Chief of the Edge, it represents more damage. They do kill the Wool Reaper. Alright. Maybe they have multiple searing effects. Opponent's down to 14. We'd love to just draw a pain-free untapped land for Collected Company. That would be our best draw. Otherwise, if we draw a tap land, we'll have to th think. We, hmm. we might have to just strike leader tap land. Arid Mesa. Riftbolt exiled. We draw another strike leader. Well, let's attack with both. Opponent takes it down to eight. We cast strike leader. Hope to not get pyroclasmed. Pass the turn. Well, we're representing lethal next turn. And now we're kind of to the point where dashing strike leader might even be better if we draw a land. Opponent gets a tap land. And we're still at 14. I wonder if they have to go after a creature here. It seems unlikely they can actually kill us from 14. Even at a virtual 11. I don't know if there's enough mana for our opponent to do that. 4 would be Boros Charm. 3, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So I would assume the maximum damage they could do our face would be 13, counting Rift Bolt. Which would mean, yeah, they they have to go after creatures. Which is good. That's where we want Burn to be, because now we're also putting our opponent in a position where they're going to have to keep going after our creatures. And barring Searing Blaze, Searing Blood, going after creatures is usually not a way to win the game. Oh, Soren that we can't cast. All right, let's attack with both. Put our opponent down to two. Well, I think we just run this out there. Cast another strike leader. Because if we hit a land, we will probably collect a company anyway. Alright, Boros Charm to 10. That still, our opponent has three cards in hand, so they're going to need four damage burn spell, three damage burn spell, three damage burn spell. And they don't have it. Sweet. Whew. So we got there, just barely, but we got there. Uh, yeah, I think we just run it back. That setup seemed pretty good. Alright, this is actually pretty reasonable for being on the draw. We're going to have two three-powered Nakatls. Swiss Spear for our opponent. We take one. Down to 19. So, Cavern on Warrior. And... Nakatl. Pass the turn. We also have Wool Reaper, which is nice. It's a way we can potentially gain some life back if our opponent starts killing our creatures. There's Searing Blood. Gonna take down Arnicottle. Yep. Hits us down to 16. 14 from Swift Spear. Another Chief of the Edge. Well, let's just Wild Nakatl, Marsh Flats, Crack Marsh Flats, Tap Sacred Foundry, pass the turn. We didn't want to leave a window where our opponent could Searing Blood in response to us cracking the fetch or something along those lines. That could get us blown out. And if our opponent kills our Nakatl, Alright, Lava Spikes us, down to 10. Goes to combat. I think we actually block here. We might lose our creature, but... I think that's okay. Sacred Foundry, untapped. Skull Crack. To pump up the Swift Spear. Down to 7. Opponent's down to 2 cards, though. Well, we get... Mardu Woe Reaper. Exile and the Coddle. Go up to eight. 
Is it worth giving this life back to pay another creature? That's the question. We play untapped blood crypt, go to six, chief of the edge, or actually maybe paragon. Go back up to seven. That leaves us dead to Boros Charm plus a three mana burn spell. As it is right now, we're in chumping mode. I think we gotta do it. So we go down to six. Bramblewood Paragon, go back up to seven. At least we're not dead to two three damage burn spells. Another Swift Spear. That's not exciting. That could really blow us out. A searing effect is the absolute worst. Oh, God. Yeah. Man. Okay. Well, our opponent had everything. This actually just is game over, I think. We have to chump with Ramblewood Paragon. And I don't even know. Our opponent didn't play a land. I guess we could Woe Reaper into Chief of the Edge. Go up to four. Double chump. Nope. All right. That does it. Well, we don't really have that much against Burn, in all honesty.